Good morning, First Presbyterian Church. I am here in our sanctuary this morning with my family. I hope you are watching with your family too. And if you aren't able to be with your family right now, know that you are part of God's family, the church, which is connected across all time and space through the power of God's Spirit. We're going to start off our worship this morning with a song. If you happen to have a copy of the Presbyterian hymnal in your home, you can actually find the words and the music to this song on page 35. But if you don't have a hymnal, that's okay too. We will put the words in the comment section of this video. Either way, we hope that you and all of your family will sing along with us at home. Let's open this morning with a word of prayer. Gracious Lord and God, we come to you this morning from all sorts of places, from our homes, our bedrooms, our living rooms, our sanctuaries, knowing that you have created all places and spaces in this world, and all of them are sacred when we gather in your name. Lord, we come to you this morning with our fears, our anxieties, and our burdens, and we lay them down at your feet. Forgive us for the times when we have let these things get the better of us. Forgive us for words spoken in anger or frustration, for all our actions that have not lived up to our sacred calling to love one another. Open our hearts and minds to your peace, which passes all understanding. Open us to your word, which comforts us, challenges us, and calls us back to you. Through your word, remind us of who we are and whose we are. We are forgiven, we are your children, and we are your light shining in the darkness. We pray these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people together said, Amen. 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 Hi, friends at home. We're going to be talking about communication right now, and I'm hoping you all can help me. How are some ways that we can talk to our friends? We have been stuck in our homes for a little while now. So, Grady, how do you talk to your friends? 
I like to talk to my friends and sometimes family using my cell phone. I'll either call or text people and that's how I like to keep in touch. That's a good way to do it. How about you, Abby? I FaceTime my friends and family on my laptop a lot. Yes. Can you actually see them when you do that? Yes. That's fun. I like that. How about you, Jonah? What do you, how do you talk? Like maybe with my with with Brady and Abby, I can sometimes talk on the on the string phone that I made at Godly Play. Oh. Let me see. Let me try. Let me see. Hello. Can you, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I think it works better if the string yeah. is all tight, doesn't yeah. it? Uh -huh. yeah. Here we go. Well, that is a creative and fun way to communicate. How about you, Pastor Neil? Oh, I have a favorite way to communicate, too. I like to communicate with my vintage rotary telephone that has a working telephone dial, just like that. You can make calls. That is a retro, but, but great way to talk to your friends. These are all really good ideas. Thank you, guys. Now I want us to think about how can God talk to us? How can we hear God? And I'm hoping you guys are thinking of some ways. What about you, Grady? How do you hear God or how does he talk to you, do you think? You know, I think a lot of times God can speak to us or talk to us through the people that he surrounds us with, like mm -hmm. our family, our friends, or just new people that we meet. Mm -hmm. How about you, Abby? I think that he talks to us through things that happen in our day-to-day -day lives. Yes, definitely. How about you, Jonah? Well, he can talk to us in a lot of ways, but he can also talk to us through nature. I think so. The beautiful world that he made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about you, Pastor Neil? I think a good way to hear God's voice is through prayer, through talking to God and then pausing to listen. Mm -hmm. These are all wonderful ways. If you have ways, you can maybe um, share them with us online. Uh, God has lots of different ways to talk to us, and he shares them with us every day. He, that's how he shares his love with us. He's always with us, um, and I hope that we can remember that. So let's, can you all pray with me, and we'll say a prayer together, and you all at home can join us. Um, just repeat after me. Dear God, Dear Dear God, God thank you so much for this day. Thank, thank you, you so much for this day. day. Thank you for talking to us. Thank, thank you for talking to us. Please help us to hear you. Please help us to hear you. In your precious and holy name. In your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Job, chapter 35, verses 1 through 16. If you have your favorite family Bible with you, I'll give you a little bit of time to find that passage. Job chapter 35, verses 1 through 16. That way you can follow along with us. We'll also post a copy of the reading in the comments section below the video. The book of Job, chapter 35, verses 1 through 16. Elihu continued and said, Do you think this to be just? You say, I am in the right before God. If you ask, what advantage have I? How am I better off than if I had sinned? I will answer you and your friends with you. Look at the heavens and see. Observe the clouds, which are higher than you. If you have sinned, what do you accomplish against him? And if your transgressions are multiplied, what do you do to him? If you are righteous, what do you give to him? Or what does he receive from your hand? Your wickedness affects others like you, and your righteousness other human beings. Because of the multitude of oppressions, people cry out. They call for help because of the arm of the mighty. But no one says, Where is God my maker, who gives strength in the night, who teaches us more than the animals of the earth, and makes us wiser than the birds of the air? There they cry out, but he does not answer because of the pride of the evildoers. Surely God does not hear an empty cry, nor does the Almighty regard it. How much less when you say that you do not see him, that the case is before him and you are waiting for him. And now, because his anger does not punish and he does not greatly heed transgression, Job opens his mouth in empty talk. He multiplies words without knowledge. This is the word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Most of you who know me know that I often like to start off my sermons with a joke, something lighthearted before we get into the heavy stuff. But since today's worship service is a Locke family production, I thought I would give my youngest son the opportunity to shine with a few of his favorite jokes. Now, a warning here, I cannot promise that these jokes will have anything to do with the sermon itself. Take it away, Jonah. What did the ghost say when his son scared someone for the first time? I don't know. What did he say? That's the spirit. <laughs> what did the blanket say to the bed during the global pandemic? Don't worry, I've got you covered. <laughs> nice. One day the disciples gathered. God appeared and said, Come forth and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. But John came forth and received the Holy Spirit. But Peter came third and all he got were some ratty sandals. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jonah. For the past four weeks, we have been reading through the book of Job, which is without a doubt my favorite book of the Bible. In this story, a man named Job, who is described by the Bible as blameless and upright, loses everything, his family, his wealth, his home, and finally, even his health. In his despair, his three best friends come to visit him, Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar. They sit in silence with him. They try to comfort him. They argue with him like good friends do, and then unable to help him anymore. They finally fall into silence. But then in chapter 32 of the book of Job, a new character shows up. His name is Elihu, and he appears out of nowhere and begins to speak with authority and confidence. And I imagine that Job and his friends are scratching their heads and saying, who is this guy and who does he think he is? Well, those questions are never answered. And by the end of chapter 37, this Elihu disappears just as mysteriously as he arrived. Our text today, chapter 35 of the book of Job, is right in the middle of Elihu's speech. And in this chapter, he speaks directly to a question that Job and his friends have been debating, going back and forth on for the last several chapters. It's a question that I think many of us have been debating and discussing and thinking about in the last week, too. In a nutshell, the question, which you can find in verse 2 and verse 3, goes like this. If we try our best to be good, to play by the rules, to do everything that God or the law or our teachers, our parents, our employers, everything that we are asked to do, but things still go wrong, we get punished. We get blamed, we lose our job, we lose our investments or our health. Why then bother being good? What advantage do we have over those who knowingly and willfully break the rules? Well, that's a great question. And Elihu says to Job and his friends in verse 5, look up at the clouds and see. The clouds here are a metaphor for nature, for God, for the universe. When you break the rules, does it bother the clouds? When you follow the rules, do the clouds applaud you? Likewise, does God benefit in some way from your obedience? Or does God suffer from your disobedience? Clearly, the answer is no. But, and this is important, that's not what rules are for. They're not to benefit God or to punish God in some way. The rules are for our benefit. Verse 8, your wickedness affects others like you, and your righteousness, other human beings. You see, most of us spend a lot of time spinning our wheels, trying to please God or at least avoid God's anger. Some of us spend a lot of time trying to please ourselves. But either way, what truly pleases God is when we take care of each other, when we think of each other. 
It doesn't change God or the course of the universe, and it may not even change our circumstances. But being kind, thoughtful, following the rules does have the capacity to change me, to make me a better person and the kind of person that others would want to be around. Now, in the second half of Elihu's speech, he says something a little shocking. He says in verse 13 that surely God does not hear an empty cry, nor does the Almighty regard it. I think we're used to thinking that God listens to our prayers no matter what. But Elihu says, no, what God disregards is an empty cry. I think every parent at some point learns to recognize the difference between the cries of their children in the middle of the night that indicate pain or fear or sadness or a need for help on one hand, and on the other hand, those cries that indicate a temper tantrum or stubbornness or just the fact that it is way past bedtime. And so a seasoned parent knows exactly when to jump to the rescue and when to ride out the storm or simply rock our little ones to sleep. We learn to take with a grain of salt those words shouted in anger by our children. I hate you. You're so mean. It isn't fair. I think it's the same with God. But the fact that his anger does not punish and he does not greatly heed transgression, as Elihu says in verse 15, doesn't mean at all that he doesn't love us. It just means that he's patient with us, even when we don't exactly deserve it, even when we open our mouths in empty talk and multiply words without knowledge. Those last words were Elihu's words directed right at Job. And they may sound harsh until you realize that they're almost the exact same words that God himself speaks to Job just a few chapters later. When God shows up and speaks out of the whirlwind, he tells Job, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? And Job, after having thought things over a little while, finally agrees and says, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. So, who is this mysterious stranger, Elihu, who walks right into a conversation among friends and then disappears? His name, Elihu, is Hebrew, and it's actually a contraction of the two Hebrew names for God, El, or Elohim, and Yahweh, which is sometimes shortened to Yahu. So, Elihu. Who then is this mysterious messenger who shows up in the book of Job bearing God's name, speaking right before God who shows up and almost foreshadowing the very words of God? Well, scholars have all sorts of theories, but in Christianity and in Judaism and in many world religions, there is a long-standing tradition of God showing up embodied in human form, speaking wisdom through the voice of the humble stranger. And then you look again, and suddenly he's gone. I want to leave you with this question. How does God speak to you today? in the midst of your challenging times? Is it through your circumstances, even the difficult ones? Is it through the silence in between the words? Is it through the counsel or even the arguments of your closest friends and family? Or is it sometimes through the random encounter and mysterious conversation with a total stranger? Or does God speak to you straight from heaven out of a storm and a whirlwind with an audible voice? We find all of these examples in the book of Job. Listen for them in your own life, in your own trials and temptations. But know this above all, that God loves you, God is watching over you, and God is always closer than you might think. Thanks be to God. Please join us in saying the Lord's Prayer at home. With the confidence of God's children, let us say this prayer 
that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In Isaiah 55, 11, the scriptures teach us that when God's word goes out among the people, it will not return empty, but will accomplish its purpose. We are called to be a part of that purpose, to respond to God's word, which we have received today. You can do that in a number of different ways. You can share this message with someone who might need to hear it. You can make commitments this week to listen or even write down how God communicates with you in different ways. You can make a commitment to join in the work and ministry of First Presbyterian Church. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to volunteer. You can help by supporting First Presbyterian Church financially with a donation or a weekly recurring gift. And you can respond by letting us know in the comments how we can help you, how we can pray for you, and how we can serve you as your church family. Our closing song is number 462 in the Presbyterian hymnal. We'll also post the words in the comments section so you can sing along with us at home. One, two, three, four. Oh, oh, oh. 
service now, but we hope to see you again next Sunday and throughout the week. If you're watching with your family today, please join hands with those around you as I give the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you as you wander through this world. May your eyes be filled with wonder. May your heart be filled with love. May your feet seek out the path of wisdom and may God lead you homeward to his peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.